Today I need you to embrace what comes hard. Today I need you to accept the challenge. Today I need you to fall in love with the process. There will be plenty of opportunities to get discouraged, to lose your passion, think that it's not meant to be. But if you're going to reach your destiny, you have to have a made up mind. If you give up after the first time, or the fifth time, or the 30th time, what that really means is you didn't want it bad enough. There should be something you're believing for that. You are relentless. You are not moved by how impossible it looks. You're not discouraged by how long it's taking. You don't give up because people told you no. Your attitude is, if I have to believe my whole life, I'm not gonna stop believing. I'm not gonna take no for an answer. I'm not gonna settle for mediocrity. I'm gonna keep pursuing what would in my heart. And ask yourself, what do I really want? What do I really want? And write it down. Writing causes thinking. Thinking creates an image. And you get these images You're building going. You a vision in your mind. It's the visionaries that change the world. Think of that. But what keeps that competitive edge? What keeps you on top is the ability to think and prepare mentally over and over and over again. The body has limitations. The mind does not. We focus so much on what goes on from the neck down that we forget. It all starts from here. Everything starts there if you're not mentally ready. You're never really physically prepared. And that's where the preparation starts. What would your life be like as you look toward the future? If you decided, I'm not going to allow my peers to stop me. And I'm saying Whatever to you, you do, do it because if you don't, life is going to whoop you until you surrender. So when you're young and you make mistakes, don't let him eat you up. Because everybody that the made you got it. to fail in order with. Hey, look, man. To understand how to hit the game when you it's got shot. To miss the game when it's shot. You know you got to be tough because the road to success is always under construction. It's never a clear path to success. The people who become successful are the people who have a relentless attitude. And you just got to hang in there. Through the bad breaks. Because the bad breaks is coming. But they usually come right before. The big break is about to you happen. You get a series of bad breaks. And it stumbles up a lot of people. My life and my success is to say to anyone. You can stumble. You can fall. You can get back up again. No matter what you face, no matter how bad it is, going to be when there is a challenge. And by a challenge, I mean anything in life, any, any challenge, anything that you're facing. The only way to overcome the challenges that you face is to start walking. Take that step every day. No matter what you are facing, get up. And start walking. I have the ability to see the end before the beginning even begins. And what that I means. I know that to get to the very end. I can see end. it right now. So before with the bus. I was lost weight. I saw myself walking across the stage at 191 Got pounds. Got to get to get to the door. I saw myself six months. A year it later, was take me to I do. saw myself walking Getting across the stage, graduation from Buds, and I was able to be there at 300 pounds. And that feeling that I was nowhere near, that feeling, I was able to put myself there a million times. Every then that feeling like, of, like, my God, that is gonna feel amazing. That's what made me suffer. That's what allowed the pain to be real, is it? This is worth it. I want it. to feel for this next 18 months. It took me 18 Become months to find. Become a native to find me. 18 months to 6 months to be 18. That's what woke me up every morning was. I don't put myself through this much pain For and a few suffering. Seconds. So it is a few seconds of joy. It's so worth it, man. As a people, don't so get. So I'm able to put myself at the you know finish I line. I have no finish line. But at the finish line of an event. Before even start to say. How are you gonna fill it into this? this is my biggest tool That's of life. Why I've I... been able to put myself in cold water. Put myself in 100 no millions race. of times I've before. And I'm able to go through the race I'm and see. feel about 50. Almost, to, almost the... to the exact. Exact feeling so right. So when it comes up. It's no surprise. No surprise. I've already done this many times. I recommend. The last time I was. Which is made I in said I've lectured at over 3 million people. Guess how many have actually and gone. got this little book. Answer very few. My best guess is 
Such an easy thing to do. This little no. book. One no. is easy Two to find. The most easy you to can buy. Pay for you can borrow that from your kids. But it's easy to find and, and easy, it's to buy. easy to read. Why wouldn't everybody go get we it? We don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. Here's how profound some it do is. And some don't. Now here's the numbers. About 10% do. We don't know the mystery of that. And I'm telling you, those from numbers now, will still the be the same. Don't Only the faces change. I used to belong to the 90%. Who couldn't be bothered? Even if it was easy. How many people have a library card? Answer 3%. 97% couldn't be bothered. Guy specializes in but happy he hour. Have a card. And now readily and Blame quickly the government. blames his company and blames the pay scale. Here's my advice to you today. Walk away from the 97%. Don't talk like they talk. Don't go where they Don't go. Don't act like Don't they specialize act. what they specialize in. Throw away the blameless they cling to. You got to be consciously conscious today. Because your environment can hypnotize, mesmerize and paralyze you. The other thing Take is Take full responsibility for your life. Oscar Wilde once said, Responsibility is what we expect from somebody else. This is very true. Most people dread accepting responsibility. That's just a fact of life. And we can see it in operation every day. We can see ourselves getting hot under the collar. When the dentist keeps us waiting. And we're sitting there reading old magazines. When our appointment was 30 minutes ago. And we don't stop to that think. That we forgot to mail in this month's mortgage payment. We can see ourselves growing angrier and angrier because a business contact is supposed to call at and noon, here it is. almost two o'clock, and the phone still refuses to ring. But we don't stop to think about the calls we ourselves have forgotten to return. While well, we've been so busy fuming, we can see ourselves writing an angry letter to the airline because the flight was delayed. But we don't write an angry letter to ourselves when we're late for something, even though that might not be a bad idea at all. Yes, we can see avoidance of responsibility all the in time. In both our personal and professional lives. And here's something else we can see just we can as see that often most people aren't as successful as they wish they were. Do you see there's a connection between these two very common phenomena? I certainly do. And by the end of the session, I hope you'll agree with me. I hope you'll understand that it's in your best interest to take responsibility for everything you do. But that's only the beginning. I'm also going to suggest that many times. It's even best to accept for responsibility. the responsibility of others. Especially when you're in a managerial leadership role. I can hear you saying what? Accept responsibility for someone else's mess up. Why would I want to do something like that? Well, that's a fair enough question. And over the next few minutes, I'll try to answer. One of my weak points in my personal life is I don't like technical stuff. So even though I have to be on Twitter and Instagram and I don't Facebook care for that. So guess what? I find somebody who loves to do that. You know I find somebody who has a strength. Where I will have a weakness. And I partner with All them. All you're trying to do is get to the goal. No one gets there by themselves. Everybody needs help. Now when you know what you got going for you. Be confident, not cocky. Managing your strength. Knowing what they are. And don't let nobody talk you out of it. And that gets you. ready. You can fight ready like that. You got to know you helps you develop your skills all the while you're developing your strength is, is not if you just gotta keep developing the don't strength let anybody the talk you. you must work on improving your weaknesses so I've had in to. spite of myself get on instagram get on twitter get on facebook I got to do the videos whether i want to or not because the world is moving to social if media if i had as many followers as kim i Kodishin. probably wouldn't even have to do this tv show during the years when professional basketball was just beginning to become really popular, Bill Russell, who played center for the Boston Celtics, was one of the greatest players in the pro league. He was especially known for his rebounding and his defensive skills. But like a lot of very tall centers, Russell was never much of a free throw shooter. His free throw percentage was quite a bit in fact, below but average. His low percentage didn't really give a clear picture of Russell's ability as an and athlete. In one he gave game. a very convincing demonstration of this. It was the final game of a championship Between series. Between Boston and the Los Angeles Lakers. With about 12 seconds left to play. The Lakers were behind by one point. And Boston had the ball. It was obvious that the Lakers would have to foul. One of Boston's players in order to get the ball back. And they chose to foul. Bill Russell. This was a perfectly logical choice. And statistically. Russell was the worst free throw shooter. On the court at that moment. If he missed the shot. The Lakers would probably get the ball back. And they back. still have enough time to try to win the game. But if Russell made his first free throw, the Lakers' chances would be seriously diminished. And if he made both shots, the game would essentially be over. 
Bill Russell had a very peculiar style of shooting free throws. Today, no self-respecting basketball player anywhere in America would attempt it. Aside from the question of whether it's an effective, shoot a basket. it just looked too ridiculous. Whenever he had to shoot a free throw, the six foot eleven Russell would start off holding the ball in both about hands. waist high. Then he'd squat down and as he straightened he'd let go up of the ball. It looked like he was trying to throw a bucket of dirt over a wall. But regardless of how he looked, as soon as Bill Russell was fouled, he knew the Celtics were gonna win the game. He was absolutely certain of it. Because in a situation like Statistics this, and percentages mean nothing. There was a much more important factor at work. Something that no one has found a way to express. In numbers and decimal points. Simply put, Bill Russell was a player who wanted to take responsibility for the success or failure of his he team. He wanted the weight on his shoulders. In a situation like this, no possibility for excuses. No possibility of blaming anyone else. If the game was no lost. No second guessing. Bill Russell wanted the ball in his own hands. And nobody else. And like magic. Even if he'd missed every he'd free ever throw. shot in his life before this. He knew he was going to make this one. And that is exactly what happened. That is what virtually always when happens. When a man or woman accepts responsibility eagerly. And with conscience.